Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to uh, the first in uh, first. I don't know if this is going to be an interview. I think it's just going to be a. I think it's just going to be a, a, a good chat about comics, comics publishing. Maybe how you get into it, whether or not my guest, who is yeah. Demetrius Zahafakis, is that right? Zahafakis. Zahav, thank you. Thank you. That's good. Anyone who knows good. my channel, uh, Dimitri, knows that I, I just can't get any name right other than John Smith. So um, I do apologise for that. But this guy, Dimitri, is the publisher, creator and editor of Black Box Comics that... Um, I recently discovered via of all places Instagram. Now I don't I don't look like the kind of guy that's that's heavily into socials, but it was it was the artwork that drew me in. Um okay. just recently picked up Dead Detective and Empath. And from there, me and you connected um because I'm just interested in how for a start you begin. You're obviously an independent publisher, so how? Firstly, why? Why start a, a, a comics publishing company? Why? Um, and and how did it? You know, how did you get it off the ground? Like, did 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 you approach a writer first, an artist first, or did your idea, your story, did you start sketching? I'll stop, and I'll give you the floor, Dimitri. So, how did it begin? So, um. Well, prior to this new career of mine uh, as a publisher, I um, I was working in banking for roughly 18 years. Uh, and I did IT work, information security. And the one of the ideas I ended up having was doing a comic book about an IT guy in banking. Right. And you know, like all the challenges, difficulties, office humor, um, or everything that goes into it. And I thought that was easy for me to um, uh, acclimate to uh, the comic industry because it was something that I was already familiar with. Yeah. And working on something like that, I, I already understood where the story was going to go, how it was going to work out. And, um, you know, I, luckily I got to work with a lot of pros from like DC Comics on our first title. Uh, we had Scott McDaniel work for DC Marvel. We had Andy Owens. He worked for DC, Marvel, uh, I believe Dark Horse and a few others. Um, Tio Gonzalez, he worked for a bunch of publishers. Um, I think uh, I can't, uh, Aspen Comics and a few others. Taylor Esposito worked for DC Comics. And when so would, having... When would this have been, Dimitri? Around, around what time? Uh, well, we, we launched in 2017. March 2017 was the first title. Yeah. Which so, you know... When, 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 the IT, what was it called? It, um... IT, the secret world of modern banking. Yeah, and and so now is basically our seventh year coming up uh, in March. Uh, but having a team like that that's been assimilated made it a lot easier for me because you have pros that are kind of guiding you in the beginning. Um, so for me, it was a lot of like learning curves and figuring everything out, how the process is, and even learning things from them in their own skill sets. You know, like what how a penciler sees things and how a writer does their layout, um, how, how a letterer approaches certain things or a colorist. Um, and, and, and it's interesting because every time you work with a different group, you start to learn other things from each individual. And hopefully I, I, I do the same for them and then give them something back in return. Uh, maybe, maybe, I, I, I maybe, don't, right. I don't think maybe, so. no, I don't maybe. Think so. Not that but, list of names, that list of names you just gave me, they're probably going, oh, you know, we, we'll teach him how to do it. We'll show him. We'll show him the well, way. Well, <laughs> look, been, they, they were in the game for, you know, you're talking about guys who've been in the game for 20, 30 years. So, you know, I mean, they're heavily experienced. And uh, I mean, at that time, I probably couldn't provide any or, or very little help. Uh, but uh, now I've, I've learned a lot and I'm able to really, the help um people on the team and guide them and what to do um, well you could the, you... the one thing cool. the one thing I, I i always did good which i i you know we i know we briefly spoke about original art but i i used to do a lot of like commissions right. and in the commissions i would think of ideas or stories to develop um and ask the artist to to draw that yeah. and i think that kind of helped me with you know working on this stuff now where 
Um, I come up with a lot of the ideas for like covers or uh, maybe some stuff that I want to happen in the stories and things like that. So it, it's been uh, good, you know, kind of learning and crossing that over into each other from the hobby side of it to an actual business, you know? Yeah, but that that must be the cool side of it, thinking, right, it's my company, but I've got an idea for a cover. Like, yeah. yeah. Never, nevertheless, you, you you want it to be good. Like, it's, it's coming from the best place, isn't it? Um, yeah. Because yeah. Sure you've got the most to lose. If, and, and, and yeah. I assume, so was you a, a long time comic fan before? So you was in banking for 18 years. So yeah. what made you... Was it something that you was doing then that you thought, oh, I'm packing up for good, like I've had enough, like you, you're burnt out or whatever it is, or you want a, a lifestyle change because you've got family around you, whatever it is, I don't know why. But so what yeah. was it that kind of made you change? And then why choose a comic? Like, why do I that? mean, I loved IT and banking. Yeah. But I did do it for a very long time. And I, I you know, you don't have your hours that you could actually manage and so when you have a family and you have kids and things like that you want to try to have something that's more flexible for that and uh um, balance it and, and and being my own publisher not only gave me the flexibility of the schedule but the love and passion that i've always had for comics since i was a kid so there's nothing better than that right like you're you're enjoying and loving what you do you get time with your family you have a, a schedule that you could control uh you can inspire a lot of people all around the world um you know characters that people love like we've had people that have said oh dream master is my favorite character in all of comics which is crazy because we only did five issues right so that must be uh, it, it's a great feeling knowing that people fall in love with these characters and uh, the fact that we're reaching the whole world is amazing you know yeah no that that's good so could you say it was a dream you, yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, he was he was he was chasing a dream, or maybe that's a bit too dramatic. Is it? I don't know what I, I also could describe it really, because I I've got to say that that would be mine if I would if I have had the well, you've got to have first of all some big big brass balls to 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 take it on, um, and some thick skin, um, and a, a whole whole wad of patience. So yeah, yeah, I've got to applaud. I've got to applaud you for doing it. And seven years later, I mean, how many titles now are in are in the works? I mean, uh, is it Biomex that I've, I've I've seen recently? Biomex, yeah, was just announced like on CBR and a bunch of other comic news sites. Um, that's our fourteenth title. Um, but we did have two volumes IT, so fifteenth in terms of volume. Wow. And the volume typically is five. We typically do five issues. We've done some that are a little different. Um, but I've got about 15 that are in the works in the background, which, I mean, it's going to take time, you know, for me to get everything out. And 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 because we just focus on quality. We're not looking to put out volume. We we want to give everybody uh, the best bang for their buck, right? You're paying four or $5, maybe even more some people, I don't know, for a comic. Um, so we try to give you the highest quality in terms of what our writer, our artist can give you, our colorist, our letterer, um, even all the way down to the paper quality that we use um, I, 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 is high quality. Glossy paper all the way through. Um, I mean, I've it's got... glossy and, and and probably even thicker than most, you know. So uh, and, and it's only nineteen ninety nine. It's good. It's good. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, you, so you're, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, you're doing it. it, it I feel like it's important to do right by the fans, you know. Yeah. Don't, so, don't. so we we do our best for sure. So, do you think? I mean, not that um, not that the big two, um, are crap. But there's obviously at the moment, I think, there is a massive opportunity that um, because I. I've got to admit, on my weekly uh, comic reviews, I am reviewing a lot more Image, AWA, Boom Studios, um, the odd Dark Horse. I've got to admit, I don't Dark Horse are finding their own space, but you know, I've just got to say, nothing wrong with what they're doing, but just maybe not my thing. Yeah, and I think I think Black Box are kind of getting into those three that I mentioned: Boom, Image, and um, AWA. They're doing. 
non non superhero stories every now and again they do but they are squarely aiming at a mainstream audience which i always i've always believed there's not there's nothing wrong with with targeting a mainstream audience with different stories right so i think i think there's a good opportunity but but do you see there's an opportunity there where the big two are kind of leaving they're kind of leaving a bit of a door open aren't they and do, do you i mean it was kind of i think you know they, they've got their niche you know um they've got their superheroes and there's always a place for them and we all grew up on that so um a lot of us owe a lot of what we have today to them yeah um i know we can't agree you know we can't agree that we like every single book that's put out i mean um but that's that's with everyone though right like even with what we're putting out um i try to put out everything with love and 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 the best quality and uh hoping that the whole team that's working on it loves what we're putting out but not everything can be a home run and not everything can be for everybody yeah. uh, but the opportunity as you said that that's there is that what we do is different than the big two for example and where it's non-superhero stuff right like we have the dead detective and uh we have the it book right and and we have the cyclist book and, you know, they're, they're not like super powered, you know, individuals, uh, but they're really great stories that are written. Uh, they are, uh, the art is amazing in it. Um, the concept of that title or, or the story is really good. Um, and, and like cyclist, for example, before it even hits stores, issue one and two sold out. Um, so that was, that was a big thing for us. Um, and each each title, for the most part, that every time we have a new title coming out, outsells the previous title. Nice. So that's a good thing to see uh, to see that you're growing and that people are noticing you and they're buying more and more of your books. Um, and we 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 we've played around with going through different genres, right? We've got horror, we've got like thriller, drama, comedy um bigs and tiny is like our comedy book that people yeah, like i think, I think you've, uh, because you've got a, a really nice cross section there of um of stuff. yeah i mean we got things like you know ninja kaidan that was a really big book for us uh you know empath and that that detective are being very well received right now and they're, um, they're the two like i say they're the two i picked up and i, I love the way uh detective danto i like i just like that little wink just like that little wink at the audience, like where you can tell you lot are having fun. So why shouldn't we? Right. And the other thing I enjoyed was you're embracing, like, and, but you know, I can only speak for the two I've read, but both of those are embracing the idea. Whatever the idea was that you guys sat around the table and you went, that sounds cool. What if he does this? And what if they do that? And what if the villain, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then embrace it. Don't, duck and dive around it and make it something that it isn't make it something more um right. or pompous or serious than it needs to be right just right be, it just was great entertainment both titles great entertainment and and also solid solid artwork like solid oh look there's a background there love it <laughs> because yeah, yeah. sometimes some of the modern artwork and listen oh, i am a geek the old hog but sometimes some of the modern artists can draw better than i can draw but storytelling yeah. wise uh, yeah. so so what what came first like in a in a kind of chicken and egg scenario what so what comes first as far as you know finding the writers and the artists how difficult has it has it been like at the because at the beginning you wrote the it story didn't you I mean, I wrote like the idea, the concept of it. Um, and then I went over it with the writer of what I wanted to happen, who the characters are, so where are what you, they're in. Where are you finding huh? them? So how do you go about? So you sat down and said, right, I want to publish comics. So then where did you go? Like, did you troll the, uh, the conventions or, you know? Well, I mean, I was already, I was already collecting. <laughs> I was already collecting comics. Right, cool. And comic art, so I had a lot of connections to writers and artists already. Yeah. 
so, so that gave me a little bit of an edge uh, when I started to, to 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 have those conversations with those people, to ask questions. Um, so, you know, when I laid everything out, um, like I knew who I wanted to work on the, the books. And, you know, typically the first thing I do is come up with the concept, right? What do I think would be a cool and unique concept that really hasn't been done before? And then I try to envision what it would look like. Um, and I would need to find the perfect artist for that book, right? I I don't just go and fill in with any artist, say, oh, you, you know, just put him here, right? Like just to fill it in, just to have an artist. I, I really try to find the perfect artist for that book. Yeah. Um, and, and if you look at books like Jin Hunter, if you've ever seen that, um, Dream Master, yes. uh, the amount of detail that's in that is perfect for the dream and nightmare world uh jin hunter is perfect for that anime style of what i envisioned um so e each one is very unique like one book does not look like the other book right yeah no I'll, yeah you, you've got definitely you've got very specific like there's something for everyone to try out and then get in. have you thought of um i know you, you know you can answer yes have you thought of kind of can is this like a black box universe or were you just doing Dead Detective, here's Empath, here's Dream, Dream you know, here's the gene, here's Biomex, blah. Well, it's it? it's it's starting off that way, but it turns into the black box universe. So right. the reason I say that is because I want at least the first, possibly the second volume to be very focused on the actual title and who that hero is and uh, you know, so you could grow a love for that character and then, you know, slowly have some cameos occur. And, you know, from there, you continue to grow the universe in more detail. Yeah. Um, so like Project Icarus, it had a cameo of the IT character. Nice. Um, I'm not going to say who, but Empath, uh, you'll see in issue five, there, there's a cameo of a character from another title. Oh, cool. Um, so the, the characters you'll start seeing and, and noticing that they're, you know, crossing over a little bit and it, it's going to get really fun. Um, what the connections are to one another and how they connect. Cause it's not a forced universe. It's there's really a connection to everybody. Brilliant. No, that's, so that's... I think it'll be pretty, pretty interesting. The, how, how difficult is it, Dimitri, getting your, the, your message out there? So you've got your comic publishing company, you know, in the modern world with everything going on. What how challenging are you find it finding it to to get to the comic book audience? I mean, is it still actually? I've only just thought this off the top of my head. Is it? Are you in the digital domain as well, or is it all floppies and? When you're, um, I mean, I focus an audience on um, what I grew up on, which is physical, right? I, I prefer to hold a comic book and, and read it that way, but we do offer it digitally. So, um, we're right now we're more focused digitally on global comics. Um, they're like a new upcoming uh digital um database basically where you could go like go and just download, and they, they have all, all the pretty much all the publishers at this point. Um, and it's a really easy to use uh, site. Um, so they've done a great job on that. What the um, but be? What, what is the, what's the percentage, Dimitri, of digital versus floppy? I mean, digital might be like five or 10 percent, maybe. Oh, wow. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Wow. Yeah, it's it, it's very little. It's not it's not much. But yeah. it, it does give people an opportunity who I think maybe they don't even want to read it digitally, but they go and they look at the previews from the site. And and they'll they'll check out the cover. They'll see the first few pages digitally and be like, oh, you know, this is worth my money. I'll go buy it uh, a physical copy. So um, it, it's good to have it. You know what I mean? You have exposure um, and you get whatever audience you get from there and, and you continue to grow it. So, so what what do you think the challenges are like moving forward for you? Um, so sales are improving. Good. So so whatever you're doing now is working and obviously that's backed up with product made with love and passion which is all all you know you're ticking all the boxes so how how you know what are the challenges promoting 
black box as a publisher? Like, where, I mean, you know, I think social media is it traditional, you know, through uh, previews and diamond or and, and having big full pages? Like, what is it? I mean, you have to do everything, right? I mean, there's nothing any marketing avenue you got to take, uh, even if it gives you very little, um, you got to try to utilize it. Yeah. Um, but I, the, the best is always, I think, word of mouth um or you know comic retailers uh telling people saying hey this is a good book you know try it out yeah. which we've had a lot of shops do that for us and it's i'm super grateful for that because they, they've been very uh loyal to us they've been buying a lot of our books um I, I, we even get lots of reorders direct which is good um but yeah i mean we we do marketing on twitter facebook instagram we 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 go to conventions. Um, we've done comic shop signings. Um, a, lo a lot of the creators that are on the books are, you know, also reaching out to their audience and they push the books very hard. Um, so, you know, it, it's a slow and steady growth, right? There's no like one answer to this. Yeah. yeah. I wish there was an overnight answer, but there isn't. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, like I said, it, we, we're we're constantly growing and selling more each new title, um, but you know it's a little bit at a time, and and that's that's fine. You know you'll see a few jumps, you know that are a little bit more than usual sometimes, but as long as it's constantly on on, on the uptick, I'm fine with it. You know, and uh, that's yeah. that's what we've been doing. Um, our social media following is pretty big too. Like even on Instagram, I think we have like, I think it's over fifty thousand followers now. Nice. Uh, Deservedly so. so. For, for a small independent publisher, I think, you know, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Brilliant. I mean, the, the imagery, the image, like I say, the, it was it was for me on Insta, and I'm I'm not big on Insta, you know, just for my little channel. I'm, I'm only on social media just for my little channel. I'm not on anything personally. So it's all about the comic stuff. It's all about films and TV, whatever, you know, is, is, is going about. Yeah. But, it, but uh, it was the imagery, the artwork that you was you was putting, and and that is, I think it's, you know, that that captured the imagination. So, right, captured cap my mind, my, my tiny little before. I you, appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone starts before you. So, are you? So, as each each new title comes out at the moment, are you are you you're doing a, a graphic novel format of those, or are you just keeping? It I haven't. I haven't done it for all of them, but several of them we have. We've done the trade paperback, which is the graphic novel. Yeah. Um, we we did it uh, most recent, I believe, with Shino Kaye, the Shino Cage, the uh, samurai fantasy story. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that one yet, but oh, that's a really good book. In the UK, it's it's. It, I know it's tough to get them, right? It's not good. Um, the so, just so you know, though, they, they are being um, re-offered to, to Diamond, so any comic shop in the world can can order them. I've just seen, is it a, a Dream, Dream Master, is it issues one to five? Yes, Dream Master was on there, yeah. I've, I've ordered those, and obviously I've got Empath, Dead Detective. That was all right. They came through, like, okay, just yeah. before Christmas. So, that, so, yeah, I think things are getting better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just keep an eye out. Um we're pushing them out because we want to give everybody from all around the world a chance to to pick up the books. You know, um, I know obviously in the U.S. it's a little easier, but I mean everyone else is getting an opportunity as well, at, at least a second or third opportunity at this point. So that's yeah. good. How satisfying is it when you go to the conventions and meet the meet the fans? Um, I I enjoy that a lot because I get to meet. Um, it, it's not just fans, but it's it's families. You know, it's people, right? So. Yeah. Um, I, I love seeing father, son, mother, daughter, uh, you know, coming and bringing their books that they had at home and you get a chance to sign it and they're inspired and they show you stuff that they've been drawing or writing stories at home. I think all that is uh, it, it is quite fun and, and, and rewarding, you know, so that that's definitely a good part. And you, you don't overtly market yourself in this way. But have you made a conscious effort to use, um, I know it's all overused and, and people roll their eyes, but a more diverse set of creators? Can I put it that way? Did you make a conscious sure. effort to do that because you wanted, and, and there's nothing wrong with it, rather than moan about 
not seeing certain representations in the comic world, you know, not seeing a superhero of a certain colour, sex, race, creed, religion. Was that something conscious right at the beginning or is it, was it just you, you no, didn't realize it, but that's how it happened? I mean, I'm friends, like I said, with a lot of people prior to starting the company that were in that community. So I knew a lot of the artists and the writers and um, that was the easy part for me, right? I'm like, I already know somebody, I trust them. We'll let them kind of guide us a little bit in the beginning to get our foot in. And and, and I would work hard to try to learn everything else and, and get it moving even better uh, as it goes. So, I mean, you know, you're friends with everyone. At least I am. I'm, you know, so right. I and, and, and sometimes what happens is one person gives me a good reference for another artist or another writer. And I look at their work and see if that work matches what I want to do. Yeah. Um, so, well, we had a guy named Jonathan Hedrick. We had, uh, he's the writer for Dream Master. We had, um, a, another gentleman like yourself who has a YouTube channel, really nice guy, uh, comics with Bueller. Uh, he recommended him, but I didn't immediately hire him just based off the recommendation. I needed to know like, what does this guy like to write? You know, where, where is his space? Um, and, and even I spoke to him and, you know, horror was where he wanted to be at and what he enjoyed. And uh, when I had Dream Master, which is about like nightmares, I thought like he's a good fit for this. Yeah. And he's done an excellent job in that. You know, um, Brian Hawkins, he's he's done a fantastic job for me. He's written three, uh, three different titles for me. And he was referred to me by a gentleman named Ramel who did Bigs and Tiny. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you get good references, and if it works out, you is know. Hawkins the one on Empath, he isn't, yeah. So, yes, yeah. Brian Hawkins is on Empath. Yeah, he also wrote Dr. It. Wilder, yeah. and he also wrote uh, Devil's Dominion, which Devil's Dominion, Volume 2 and 3, is scheduled to come out this year. Right. So that, that'll be at least 15 issues in the can for that one character. Wow. Uh, that's amazing. And and you'll see her also, like I talked about, crossing over with others. And it's going to be fun. It's a lot of fun. So the plan this year, I mean, how it sounds like it's almost like an exponential, you know, you've been going for seven years, but and I know I've only just come along recently, but it does seem from what you're saying that you've kind of gone up, up, up. But like this year, yeah. coming, you're going to go like nice, like. And and I, I know you're talking about diversity. I mean, we definitely have a diverse group of creators. We have a diverse uh, group of characters. Yeah. Um, and I was saying earlier, it's like you know, it's 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 very natural uh, with the way we we develop everything and the people that we work with. Um, and you know, we have something like like I said for everybody to enjoy. You know, and and, and, and people love people love to see. Um, representation of themselves you know because we see ourselves in these characters sometimes you know we're very uh connected to them and and, and what they're experiencing um whether it you know um uh, it could be stuff in terms of culture it could be just uh where they live it could it could be anything um so we we, we definitely are connected to these characters yeah and i'm, I'm only being honest but like sometimes that whole shtick can be shoved down your throat um, yeah, yeah. What I found with Dead Detective and Empath was the they're black characters. That the story is just a naturally. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. What this these could like uh, Danto could be Hispanic. He could be any. But you're not. Which is what I'm finding refreshing. So these are different characters of different you know races, we create you know all everything that certain publishers would. That would be the, the thing that they would talk about. Rather than talking about Dead Detective, they would say, oh, my God, look at this black character. And it's like, oh, straight away, certain people are turned off because, well, all right, OK, you've got a black character, but what's he doing? What's he about? Like, but Where? from Black Box Comics' point of view, you have always gone with, look at this cool artwork. Look at these cool characters. This is what they're all yeah. about. You know, come and yeah. read the books. Not... Look at us over here, you know. It gets a bit. I mean, look, the comic fan base is very intelligent, and you don't need to 
spell every little thing out you know uh, you, you just write a good story and and represent these characters well and um like i said for me it's important that even the the creative team really enjoys what we're doing and uh, with the end result being amazing you know um and 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 something that i've been doing a little bit uh as much as i possibly can is like i try to get like a variant cover i'm I'm not big into variants but i know a lot of people are for collectible reasons and i try to get like an old school artist um and and because you a lot of them they're no longer working they're not getting the jobs and i love giving them work and and, and we have like a i mean it's unofficially but it's more like a legend variant let's call it uh, yep yeah. So I, I try to do that, and then I try to also do something with somebody a little more modern, and then give people options if they want, like a modern variant uh, artist, or or maybe like uh, someone from the '80s or the '90s, maybe even '70s. Uh, so it, it's fun. I love that because I just noticed before we was doing this interview, and I'm leafing through Dead Detective, and I'm looking at, and I thought, and I hadn't noticed it, and I thought why is he doing variants like he's an, he's an indie publisher and you know a small indie publisher but i love the fact that you must be thinking you must love because the artwork is gorgeous the wraparound Thank you. the virgin wraparound cover um, yeah, yeah i mean obviously there are artists you know are, are, that aren't in the mainstream that i may have never heard of um but like i keep saying it is it's been the artwork initially the impactful and, and the colouring as well. Do you have the same? Who is the colourist? And Adriana? Yeah, I just, th this one just got delivered. This is uh, issue three don't, here. Don't tease me. Don't put it away. Don't tease me. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, go on. I'm only joking. Go on, go on. Show it off. Show it off. <laughs> uh, got I'm us up. to show you what else What else I got here. I think that. I, I know you mentioned Dream Master, so this was the one that you probably ordered. Look at that. So what old... Um, so when you you was talking about the variants, what what? Uh... So for example, on um on Ninja Kaidan, we had like uh, Ron Friends, yeah. if you're familiar with Ron. Yeah. Uh, really nice guy. Met him at a show, and uh, uh, even his his agent, his rep, really really nice guy. This guy Scott. Yeah. And uh, you know, he did an amazing cover on Ninja Kaidan. I don't know if I have it with me. Um, I have it somewhere actually. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know if you could see this really well. Look at that. Yeah. So we had him do the variant for that on issue one, which I thought was cool. And then we had Tiago da Silva, who's one of my my main cover artists for variants, uh, also a wonderful gentleman. Uh, and so they, so we had the modern guy and the legend guy, you know, kind of like doing variants. So I thought that was fun for people to choose. A lot of people pick up all of them uh they just want the collection of it so that's fun too you know uh, so it's good to see people getting to choose what they want and then it's completely like different options you know so was you was you marvel or dc dimitri back in the day like you're saying you're, you've been a collector i was a marvel guy i was a marvel guy yeah uh, I, I, I grew up on uh mostly like daredevil that was my uh oh, main wow. character yeah that was the main character i followed Play with me look at the I see it right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I've got a, oh, it's down there, but I've got a Gene Colan uh, commission of Daredevil. Um, oh, wow. That someone did a, a podcast just the last weekend, just gone, because it's his 60th birthday, Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. That's my favourite character. That is my all-time. Yeah. Him and Captain America, they're my two. Um, and funny Yeah, enough, great characters, yeah. long history. They've had great, um, great runs. Yes. You know? They've had some of the best writers and artists. Yeah. And they've had some dogs as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's been around long it enough. Happens, I mean. He's been around long enough. He, he you know, he yeah. can have some he can have some dogs, I suppose. So are you are you creator and editor on all the titles? Um, all of them except the uh, Shino Cage. That's um uh some another group, another team that presented it to me. I mean, I ended up liking the story a lot in the art and I was like, I'll publish it. But I, I don't I'm not I, I'm self-publishing technically. Right. Like because I'm coming up with the ideas and uh, like but I don't have I don't have the time, unfortunately, to do more. So otherwise I would do more of other 
uh, create our own titles, but I just don't have the time. No, um, so, well, otherwise so you're, in, you're in image territory then where you're the pub. Not, nothing wrong with that, but right. you need to be. Oh, I right, and, and I, I kind of like I kind of like what I'm doing because I have the control of the characters. Yeah, and um, as you're building the universe, everything will make better, like cohesive uh, sense. You know uh, why they connect, right? If everybody's just creating random stuff, you could still figure it out, but it's it's not the same. Yeah, and it's you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with with for all the effort and the time and the energy that it takes to do what you're doing my god you've got to have some fun with it i can tell that you're enjoying it just just oh, yeah. stand about yeah. the varying covers like i've got wrong friends doing one and you know uh yeah yeah it, I, I love it yeah love that. um, that's you need that i think to keep because you're going to have those low i assume and you don't want too many but i assume you'll have those days where you go why did i do this <laughs> Like why yeah. I'm bothering? Like something hasn't been printed, something's been done wrong, whatever it is. Running a business because I've run my own business for all, virtually all my life, and I used to say to my wife, like every day is a your problem solving. There might only be tiny, might only be a tiny, but nevertheless there will be a problem. It might not. It might be the internet's not working one day, so you can't answer your emails. But nevertheless, if you're running your own business. You wake up and that's a problem to solve. But yeah, yeah. If you're creating like the comics you're creating and they're from your your imagination, I assume I, I like to think that like you're loving it. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean it doesn't get better, you know, like no, it, it. It, it, you're you're it's a it's a it's a like a sandbox, you know what I mean? You're playing in your own sandbox and you're just having a lot of fun and you can do whatever you want, you know? Uh, and, and you learn at the same time, which is also fun. I believe that, you know, le learning the process and uh, meeting new people and reaching people throughout the world. Um, you know, we're, we're doing books, but hopefully, you know, we're doing movies and shows one day and merchandise and all that, you know, that's, that's the other bigger part of the dream, right? That's bigger dream. Yeah. Is there any news uh, on the front? I mean, now the right strike and that to strike. So, and all that. yeah, I mean, uh, the strike is over and uh, everybody's probably getting back into gear and, 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 and probably trying to set up meetings uh, soon, I would believe. Uh, we do have people who are interested in uh, a lot of our titles. So we're, you know, constantly in talks with people. Um, but it takes time, you know what I mean? It's got to be the right thing for them at the right time. Um, it's got to be, you know, maybe they're looking for a specific genre or a specific type of character, uh, story, uh, budgets, right? That that comes into play. Um, so, you know, I, I think everything will happen in due time, you know? Um, it's just on our end, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, which is loving what we're doing and just keep coming up with creative new stuff that people can enjoy and everything else will happen, you know? Yeah. So. Well, I hope it does. No, I hope, I hope it does. And certainly empath, you're talking about budgets. I mean, and empath is a movie, right? I'm only, I've only got the first two issues, but that's the storyboard for a movie right there that will not cost a gazillion million trillion dollars. Right. Mate, right. Right? It's just a pure kind of, yeah. A, emotional yeah yeah it gets superpower you. i guess you know it's easy it's easy to do yeah definitely. it's very easy to do yeah um we have a few people interested in that one actually so we'll uh, see where that goes you know that's that's brilliant well but listen I, I wish you the best of luck with it all thank you so much roy i really appreciate everything you've done well, what I'm you do is very important by the way uh because you're giving everybody a platform to uh, speak about their books uh, to, uh, you know, like you're, you're, you're giving exposure to everybody, especially indies, which is very important. So yeah. I, I'm sure, I'm sure I could speak for everyone and say how much we appreciate that. So thank you for that. Oh, thanks to me, Trey. Love you, man. Love yeah, you. Yeah. And, and, and I've seen, I've seen your, your, your shows and you've done a, a great job on them and they're fun. They're entertaining. They're uh, for the love of, the hobby you know what i mean like you you really personally enjoy it so it's good to see honesty good feedback and you know 
Well, that's yeah, there's nothing more than anybody can ask for. So thank and you. Honesty as well. It, it's like but I, when we when I first contacted you and I said, oh, I'd like to have you on the show. And then you went, yeah, great, which is very gracious for you. But I didn't want to do it until I'd actually had some of your comics. <laughs> yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. No, that was I'm smart. Not, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and, and just gush about something I haven't read. I don't. Oh, I can do some Googling. Oh, that's brilliant. But, yeah, um, yeah. I just, no, I, I'm like you, mate. I love the stuff, and it's Marvel all the way, Excelsior. Uh, but yeah. you know, not that I'm averse to DC, particularly nowadays, the image, uh, not image yeah. specifically, but independent uh, yeah. publishing. But no, I, I really do hope that you grow and grow and grow. Um, Thank and, you. I, and I want you to come back as well, if you, you know, if you will permit me to, to, to just say, come back, and whenever you've got a new title, Bring the writers and artists on, and we'll all gush. Sure. Like, um, sure. I'll do it every every new release because no, I do love it. I can't help it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I can't help it. Some of the videos I do go on. I ramble on. The last one I did, I rambled on for like nearly two hours. I got to the end of it. I can't, but I can't <laughs> help it. I look and think, well, where can I cut that? All I've been talking yeah. about is Judge Dredd or something, or uh, 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 Brian Bolland. It was the artist Brian Bolland, and I thought. Wow, that's one artist, more or less one character, and I've got, I've got, I've gone on and on and on. But anyway, I can't help myself, and I don't think you can either. I don't think you can. Help no, myself. no, no, no. We we love it. I mean, it's it's pure joy, right? And then and and it's honesty about the book that you're reading, and um, I think that's what your viewers are 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 enjoying, and that's why you have so many followers and people loving your channel. Yeah. You know, it's and and following it, your it, and reading your comics. These are and, and that's a good word, actually. Honest. You know, that is a good you're just one. now you've said it, and I know I'm only going by two two of your titles, but no, honest. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you're misleading people. You know what I mean? So that's yeah, it's a great thing. So brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much, Dimitri. Thank you, Roy. Thank really you. Enjoyed that, and I, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'd like to think that you, you're going to come back on. This is just the beginning. Yeah, of course. I'll come back on. Maybe we'll get some of our, some of our other writers or artists on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and they can talk about the book that they worked on. So hopefully that'll be entertaining for everyone. Yeah. And I'll be posting all the links and connections and websites and doodars where everyone can get your, your stuff. Yeah. From, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. On, on the stuff. And um, until next time, Dimitri, thank you so much. Thank you, Roy. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, brother. See you again soon. Bye. Adios.